The Lord is on my side. Do you believe that? Do you believe that the Lord is on your side? Well, we see in Psalm 118 today, the psalmist being confident in the Lord being on his side. We're going to read just a few verses here in this chapter in Psalm 118. And I thank you for joining and I hope that you stick around and listen to what we learned today from the psalmist who is confident in the Lord. Psalm 118, verse 1 says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. You think about this, that the Lord's mercy is everlasting. It stays, it sticks around forever. It doesn't ever leave in his mercy because he is our Lord. We are not given what we should be given. The punishment for sin is death. And it's an eternal separation from God and we deserve that. But because of the Lord and he and his goodness and his mercy is everlasting we shall not see death as the people of the Lord. Verse 2 says, Let O Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. You know, when you become a Christian, you become, the scripture says, as a Jew. So you become as the people of the living God. You are born again. You are born into the heritage of Jesus Christ and into his kingdom. And so this verse is direct for us as well. Let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever. Do you see all this focus on the fact of his mercy? Sometimes we forget who we are, where we come from, where we've been, what we've done, the punishment that is due because of our sin to us. But Jesus paid it, so the debt is completely gone. It's as though you owed somebody the greatest debt you could ever owe them and you didn't have it to pay. And then you have Jesus step in and he paid it for you. Your greatest debt that you'll ever owe is your sin debt because you can't please God the Father in your flesh, scripture says. No flesh has ever pleased God, but Christ on our behalf went and pleased the Father for us by taking our sin and our shame because he is God and he was able to do this. But he was God in the flesh. So he paid for that debt. As a man, you cannot comprehend what that was, was like for him to take the sin debt of the whole world upon himself. And we receive that of him by faith and just believing that he is who he said he was and who he says that he is so let israel now say that his mercy endureth forever let the house of aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever let them now that fear the lord say that his mercy endureth forever and you know often because of our English language, we look at this fear as a trembling type fear. Uh, but that's not actually what it is. If it's studied out in the context in which it was written, in that uh, the fear of the Lord and the fear in the Lord is a healthy and holy reverence to him. It's not a shaking in your boots. He's your father. And he loves, if we could come up with one word to define him, it would be love. Scripture tells us that. It says, for God is love. And in love, there, there is no fear in that way, in the, in the scared to death, shaking in your boots. No, the fear of the Lord is a healthy and holy reverence to him as God overall. 
But here's where the scripture takes a turn. Verse 5. He says, I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. This psalm is believed to be written by and authored by David, inspired by God, of course, and then authored by David. But we aren't certain because the psalmist didn't actually leave that uh, in, the, in the context of this passage to know who it was for sure that wrote it. But we believe that this is uh, David, and there's so many things that we could point out throughout it why we would believe that it was David who wrote it. But he says, the Lord, uh, I called upon the Lord in distress. Uh, we know David many times had to call upon the Lord in distress, but one particular thing that I think that he may be speaking about is when he had an entire nation army after him, and the king was dead set. He was hot against him. He was dead set on, on killing him. And so you think that you have David hiding out in caves in the wilderness, um, and he is fearing his life. Uh, but he called upon the Lord in his distress. He says, the Lord answered me and set me in a large place. David ends up becoming the king himself. Verse 6, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man, what can man do unto me? He asks the question, what can man do unto me when the Lord is on my side? I have no fear. David learned through all of those things that there is no reason and no need to have fear, to be scared, right? He says, the Lord is on my side. Verse 7, the Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. He says, I will see that those enemies that hate me and are against me are dealt with because the Lord has even put people in my life to help me because he's on their side as well. Can that be said? Of you, I know it can be said of me in my life that the Lord has put people in my life to be a blessing and a help to me, especially in trying times. Um, yes, can you say that yourself about uh, your life? Can you see how God has used others around you to be a help and a blessing? Verse 8 It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. So, y'all, we don't need to put our confidence in presidents and kings and rulers and uh, our, you know, in our in the states, you know, and uh, our nation and our government. Those are people running that, and we don't need to put confidence in them. We don't need to put confidence in man. Don't put confidence in ourselves. Don't put confidence in others. Don't put confidence in our bosses and our co-workers. Put your trust. Put your confidence. Be persuaded in the Lord. And what did the psalmist here just say? He says, the Lord is on my side. Can you say that? Are you a child of the Lord? Are you a child of the King? If you are a child of Jesus, you can confidently say that the Lord is on your side. Verse 10, all nations compass me about, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. They compass me about, yea, they compass me about, but in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. They compass me about like bees. They are quenched as a fire of thorns. For the name of the Lord I will destroy them. Thou hast thrust sore at me, that I might fall, but the Lord helped me. Have you ever been helped out of a situation like that, where you, uh, where someone sought your life, but you were helped? Or you know that someone had it in for you, but not just had it in for you, they really had it in for you. They, they sought to destroy your life and to see uh, your whole family just crumble and crash. 
have you ever believed that in your life or to to or known it right known that someone was out against you this psalmist knows what it's like and he says thou hast thrust sore at me that i might fall but the lord helped me he knows what it's like to be uh, helped by the lord he that is why he knows to put his confidence not in man not in leadership but in god the lord is my strength and song another reason why we believe david is is the author of this psalm uh, when he says, the Lord is my strength and song, he has become my salvation. It's because David was, we know, a psalmist who wrote music. Verse 15, the voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. Think about this. That the voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. See, now we are the tabernacle, we are the temple, and the voice of rejoicing, the voice of praise and salvation is in us. It's in the tabernacle of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. You know, he's perfect. He doesn't miss anything. He's swift. He's precise. When the Lord is working and doing things in your life, when the Lord is what? As the psalmist has stated, the Lord is for me. The Lord is on my side is what he says there in verse 6. Let's continue our reading in verse 16. It says, the right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. We talked about this yesterday. For the righteous, there is no death the righteous right because we we pass from the death of this body into life so there is no death this it's not this body uh that will live eternally because this this body is made of flesh but it is the soul that spirit person inside of us that center inner man that's inside of us that will live forever and we're going to be given a new body Jesus is going to give us a new one verse 18 says the Lord hath chastened me sore but he hath not given me over unto death open to me the gates of righteousness I will go into them and I will praise the Lord this is key and this is the end of our teaching today it says, open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them and I will praise the Lord here in verse 19. This gate of the Lord here, it says in verse 20, this gate of the Lord into which the righteous shall enter. I will praise thee for thou hast heard me and art become my salvation. This gate of entrance, just like we spoke about yesterday in Psalm 100, enter into his presence, enter into his presence with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. You see, if you understand the, the context in which this passage was written back at this time, the kings, there was the, these courts uh, of the kings that you could not go into unless you were called by the king. You were beckoned by him. You were... Uh, forced even sometimes to come into those courts and so if the king called you that's when you could go into the presence of uh his his courts uh, to speak to him if he called you but you could not go in without being called you were killed you see and so the psalmist is using this illustration to let us understand that for us we always have access 100 percent of the time always to go into the presence of the Lord and we enter into this place with thanksgiving and Jesus is the gate he is the way and praising him that that voice of praise remember is inside of us because of our salvation in Jesus which goes on to tell us this is who it is verse 22 the stone which the builders refused has become the headstone of the corner. 
that is Jesus. He is the rock, the chief cornerstone of the church. He's the foundation of the church. And it says the, the stone which the builders refused is because that he was rejected. Jesus was rejected. Have you ever been rejected? Rejected? Have you gone through rejection? Jesus went through severe rejection. He, he, he is God, and he was God in the flesh, and yet people didn't believe him. They accused him of being demonic and satanic and, and uh, you know, messing with witchcraft and devils, and that's what they accused Jesus of. They didn't believe many, many, most did not believe he was and is who he said he is. He was rejected. That's who this psalm is, is speaking about. Verse 23 says, this is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes, having that, that gate, that way to salvation through Jesus, the cornerstone. Now listen to this. This is our closing verse. Verse 24. Be, but before we read it, it's, it's, it's such a familiar passage. It's such a familiar verse. It is used a lot in Christianity. But I want to consider all that has been said and do a quick recap of Psalm 118. It says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. I called on him in distress and the Lord answered me and he set me in a large place. It is better to trust in the Lord than for confidence in man. When I was encompassed about by my enemy, the Lord helped me. When they desired my life, the Lord helped me. And because of that gate of salvation, I shall not die, but live. And I will enter into the presence of my God through praise. That is a summary of what we just read in Psalm 118. Now let's see what verse 24 says. It says, this is the day which the Lord hath made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. You know, if I would have opened out the teaching and said, this is the day that the Lord hath made, I will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. A very used verse in, in Christianity, in the Christian realm, right? But if I would have shared that verse, first would have been different I think because now we see what the psalmist was saying all along when he said this is the day which the Lord hath made it was all of these things the Lord is good his mercy endureth forever I called upon him in my distress and he answered me, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man can do unto me. It is better to put a trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. When I was compassed about by my enemies who thrust me sore, they desired to see me dead, to fall, to crumble, but the Lord helped me. I shall not die, but I will live because of the rock of my salvation. In him, I have placed my trust and I will praise him. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Have a blessed day.
consider how the psalmist gets to this point where he is glad in the day. Consider what the psalmist was regarding in his mind and in his heart when he says, the Lord is on my side. Do you believe that? Know this. When you are his, he is on your side. God bless you all. We appreciate you joining. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe to our page. God bless you all.